What's up guys, this is Dave with another episode of El Jardín Perito. Today we're going to go ahead and make some raw goat cheese. Okay, so some things you'll need. A strainer, something to measure the temperature with. Got some raw goat milk here, about a quart. Some rennet, which you can usually find online. Mesophilic culture, also something you can find online. And some cheese or kosher salt. Also a sterilized pot, nice and clean, preferably with a lid. I'm not endorsing them, but I did find most of this stuff in a pre-package from Standalone Farms. We got it on Amazon. Came with a few other things like uh, calf lipase, citric acid, and calcium chloride, which I'm making some pretty standard cheese here, so I don't need all that. Plus, I'm making raw cheese, so it's a little different. So anyway, what you're going to do is, uh, this came straight out of the fridge. But you're going to get that in the pot there, and we're going to bring it up to 85 degrees. actually is starting to form some uh, butter fat on the side so I'm gonna make sure I put all that in there too okay so we're slowly stirring and we're gonna monitor that temperature so they say 80 to 85 I'm probably going to go with 85 here, which it's almost at, because apparently I had it out of the fridge for a little while. Okay, so we're good there. <clears throat> at this point, you're going to add the mesophilic culture. It's so a gallon of this calls for a quarter tablespoon, so you're going to want to just put a pinch of the mesophilic culture in there. And you're going to let that hydrate on top, and then you'll mix it in. The same token, uh, you do not need a lot of uh, rennet at all. Once that kind of settles on top and gets hydrated, I'll mix it in and then add a few drops while mixing in the rennet. So at a nice 85, this pot retains heat really well. So some recipes call for a half hour, others call for an hour to let that set. So I'm gonna meet halfway about 45 minutes and I'll see you guys back here. All right guys, so uh, it's actually been an hour and we're back and it seems as though everything has settled nicely. What we're gonna do now is uh, move in and we're gonna cut the curds into half inch squares. And then we're gonna go ahead and slowly in increments, turn up the temperature to about 98 degrees over a few minutes time. We're gonna do this very gradually and we're gonna hold that for about 45 minutes and cook the curds down. Right now, just carefully cutting the curds. The main thing to do here is to cut them fairly evenly so that they cook evenly. That's why they say to do it in half inch segments. I'm not doing this perfectly, but you get the idea. And 
and anything you see a little bigger you can go ahead and cut now but everything looks pretty uniform okay so now that we've cut them go ahead and turn on the heat back so right now the temperature is still at 85 so we're going to slowly bring it up to eventually 98 so what I'm doing here is uh, turning the burners on in increments I'm going to turn it on for a little bit let it catch a few degrees chill out for a minute and so on until we hit 98 and at that point some of the curds are going to start cooking down and uh, you want to kind of keep them stirred up and make sure they're separated also I forgot to add that um, after cutting them you're going to want to let them sit for just a minute to make sure they don't just kind of mush up together and uh, make a mess but um, we let them sit for a little bit Right now, we've got the temperature creeping up. I've got the pot lid on there to uh, sustain the temperature of 98 degrees. And we'll look at it in a few minutes and you'll start seeing the curds cook down. Cutting everything uh, into equal cubes here. Move it around a little bit and make sure nothing's sticking together too much. Some of these bigger ones we can cut. And making sure we're at right around 98. Okay, so it's been 45 minutes. All of our curds are cooked down. Okay, so it's been 45 minutes and all of the curds are cooked down. So what we're gonna do is strain out all the way. So I have a strainer here. But also I'm going to uh, catch all the way because I'm gonna use it for some other things. I actually use it uh, for my blueberry plants and great for yourself if you want it to, extra protein, and also uh, the chickens, they like it too. So we're just going to go ahead and strain that. Okay, so uh, it's just about all strained out. What I'm gonna do is uh, hang on to the way here. That was a bit of a mess. All right, so through the magic of uh, cinema, we cleaned up the mess real quick. And we are left with, and this is what we're left with. So I've got my cheese salt here. This part, I would use your own uh, creative discretion. I really don't like a lot of salt, but I do want to get some of the excess whey out. And uh, you know, a little salt's nice on your cheese, but I don't like going overboard. And the curds themselves, they're actually really awesome, but supposedly they spoil fairly quickly. All right, so next we're going to grab some cheesecloth. This is another uh, part where you guys will have to use your own discretion, depending on the kind of cheese you want. And uh, you'll know a little better too, based on past experience. I tried to make cheddar last time and I really and I really put a lot of pressure on there for a really long time um, 
and I actually didn't like it as much as uh, a looser batch I did. So, let me grab some cheesecloth. This came with the kit, it's really finely woven, as you'll see, but uh, yeah. So what we're gonna do here is get the curds and the cloth as much as we can here. I'm a mess. I'm a mess tonight. All right. We're just gonna wrap this up. You can already see a lot of excess whey and I've barely put any pressure on this. We're gonna kinda pack it down and just start from the top and work our way in. So like I said, it's your own discretion. You can uh, either use a cheese press, or what I do is I'll put something, say like a lid on top of the cheese and hold a 10 or 20 pound of weight on there. But uh, I got most of the whey out of here and if you put too much pressure, you actually lose a lot of the uh, healthy fats. But so far, this is what I have here. And I'm gonna, it's what's called redressing. I'm gonna flip it over, fill it into the curds. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And I'll show you guys really quick what I meant about that, uh, the lid and the weight rather than just using your bare hands. Just the lid with the weight on there. I wanted more of a goat cheese, so I'm really not trying to wring all the way out of this thing. It'll be nice and uh, soft and fluffy. <clears throat> okay guys, I'm gonna call this it. Still kinda soft, flaky. And again guys, based on your preference, you could put salt afterwards on it too. Um, when I did the cheddar, I really put quite a bit of salt on there, pressed it. Uh, kept salting the outside and uh, redressing it, but um, yeah, after a few times, it's just the way I prefer it. Also, this is probably one of the most maintenance-free. Um, there's no cheese press involved. It's, uh, it's a little bit of timing in this and that, but for cheese in general, it seems to be one of the easiest ways. Anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of El Jardín Pedido. Please comment if you have a spin on this or uh, a different take on things. And as always, don't forget to subscribe if you want to keep up with some other things I have going on. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Until next time.